Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit Worship Online, and this is our Monday Thursday service. And tonight we'll be talking about meals and about communion and about Jesus' journey toward the cross. Now I'd like you to light a candle in your space. Candle to symbolize the visible sign of the Holy Spirit's presence in our midst, in the world, and in our home. As our Lenten journey comes to an end, we gather for this Monday Thursday. Welcome to worship. Monday comes from the Latin word mandarum, which, come, which means commandment. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. As we prepare to worship together and eat together, how are we doing at loving one another. Do you feel loved? How can I love more? Let us pray. Eternal God, in the sharing of a meal, your Son established a new covenant for all people, and in washing their feet, he showed us the dignity of service. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these signs of our life and faith may speak again to our hearts, feed our spirits, and refresh our bodies. Amen. Jesus said, one who has bathed does not need to wash. In our baptism, we have been bathed by the grace of God. Trusting in the steadfast love of Jesus Christ, who has delivered us from sin and death. Let us confess our sins. Amen. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. So as we enter the celebration of these holy days, let us be reconciled with God and with one another. Lord Jesus Christ, how well you know our hearts. And, you, and still you love us and will love us to the end. We have denied you. And we have denied our calling to serve one another. We have betrayed you. And we have betrayed your commandment to love one another. Pour out your spirit of grace upon us. Teach us to love and serve you faithfully and to love and serve one another by the example you have set for us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. God frees us and in Christ everything is made new. Thanks be to God. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Children, how hearts learn to 
tied to this worship centers around meals and stories of meals. We remember that Jesus gathered around the table with the disciples to celebrate that ancient feast of Passover. Our Jewish siblings will celebrate Passover beginning with the Seder tomorrow night, Friday. Passover celebrates Israel's delivery from slavery in Egypt. It's a story of oppression, slavery, a tyrannical ruler, an unlikely leader in God's quest for liberation. During the reading and reenactment of this ancient story, questions are encouraged and stories of painful trials, oppression, and wars are often shared. So as we listen to a small portion of the Exodus story tonight, who is suffering under the yoke of oppression in our day and age, in our time? Where do wars rage and rulers terrorize? How do hearts soften? And when will freedom come for all? A reading from Exodus chapter 5. Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, so that they may celebrate a festival to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should heed him and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. Then they said, The God of the Hebrews has revealed himself to us. Let us go a three days journey into the wilderness to sacrifice to the Lord our God, or he will fall upon us with pestilence or sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, Why are you taking the people away from their work? Get to your labors. Pharaoh continued, Now they are more numerous than the people of the land, and yet you want them to stop working? That same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people as well as their supervisors, You shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks. As before, let them go and gather straw for themselves. But you shall require of them the same quantity of bricks as they have made previously. Do not diminish it, for they are lazy. That is why they cry, let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on them, then they will labor at it and pay no attention to deceptive words. Moses turned again toward the Lord and said, O oh Lord, why have you mistreated this people? Why did you ever send me? Since I first came to Pharaoh to speak in your, in, in your name, he has mistreated this people, and you have done nothing at all to deliver your people. And then the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. Indeed, by a mighty hand, he will let them go. By a mighty hand, he will drive them out of this land. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
A reading from John, chapter 13. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and they had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. And then Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Before we eat, we wash our hands as a symbol of our commitment to love and to serve one another. Tonight, we humbly wash one another's hands.
I go first. Oh, okay. Jeannie, you want to go first? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, Jeannie. This is Jeannie. She's normally behind the camera, and she's going to share with tonight a story, a story with us. Um, my favorite meal growing up as a kid was when we would gather with my grandparents and my aunts and uncles and all of my cousins, of which I have 152, so that is quite a brood. But it was the laughter and the storytelling and the fellowship and just being able to see people that I just don't see all the time. I mean, I see my immediate family all the time, but do I see all my cousins all the time? No, and that, that meal carried me through a lot of good times and a lot of bad times, but it's the fellowship that I remember the most. That's it. Thank you, Jeannie. You're welcome. Thank you, Jeannie. I'll go. Okay. Okay. Um, I've always enjoyed family meals, and we've always made a, a point of sitting down together, even if it's just for a minute in our day. But especially during COVID, we had this time to actually cook and fix meals and really linger at the table and talk more. And it's one of the things that we have continued. Um, uh, we purposely not planned or tried as much as possible to keep activities from invading that time so that we can be together. Thank you, Sarah. One of the um, things that my wife and I, Sonia, um, did with our daughters is we encouraged them to cook food we were living in Kansas at the time, and we were kind of a ways out in the country. So it was one of the things that actually helped them to focus on something after school besides sports and whatever else it might not get them in trouble because there was nothing around us, so there was no way for them to get in trouble, not really, but they found ways to get in trouble. But anyway, this one meal my daughter cooked, she liked to think that she was following directions, but she never did it appropriately. And she got confused sometimes. Now granted, this is somebody who's only in high school. So she would get confused sometimes with the small T and the big T on how much she was supposed to add. And I might also say that she was extremely good at chemistry, so we could never figure it out. But she was cooking fish because we like to eat fish. I'm not sure how long this fish was in the oven, but when it came out, it was worse than chew leather. Not that I would know what chew leather tastes like because I'd never tried chew leather. I never thought that I should, but this fish was as dry and as brittle as anything that I've ever had before. And like a good dad, I ate it because it's what we do to encourage and to support and we still laugh about it when she gets together with us and it was a complete failure and she knows it she knows it she knows now that she can't even figure out why that happened well i want to share a story about my daughters about another meal and it's a meal that you can never do wrong. And it's a meal that you can never fail at, and it's a meal that may not always seem like it's filling and full, but it's all we need. My daughters are adopted, and they came to live with us when they were three and four years old. And it was a foster adopt situation. So we were allowed to do some things while they were in that foster situation, and then we were allowed to not do things until the adoption was finalized. So my wife and I both worked in churches at that time as associates in ministry. It's something different than as a pastor at the time back in the church. And so my wife 
was taking our daughters to the church where she was at at the age of three and four when they first came. And in a normal Lutheran congregation, many of them serve communion every week. So this was the first weekend, actually, that our daughters were with us. And they went up with Sonia, my wife, to the altar rail. And like good observant foster kids, they were watching and looking around at everybody else. And so when the person who was serving the bread came to them, their hands were out there. And the church where she was at, they had a policy. If the hands were out, the child was served. And so they received the bread. And then when the person serving the wine came by, they were given some grape juice because that's what they did in that congregation for uh, younger people. And so Sonia came home from church and she said, I think our daughters just had their first communion. And then she asked an interesting question. She said, I know that we were taught that you weren't supposed to take communion until after you were baptized. She said, our daughters haven't been baptized and we know that because their birth mom has talked with us about that. We also can't have them baptized until the adoption is finalized. She said, do you think it matters? And I had a real quick response. It only matters to the people that made that rule. I think we're fine. And so my daughter celebrated their first communion they didn't have any conversation about it. They were following along with all the other people that were gathered there because they wanted to be a part of this community. And they were included. And the thing that I regret the most is I wasn't there with them to celebrate that time, that communion. I've celebrated with my daughters. I've celebrated communion hundreds of times with them since. And it still is a time for us to gather together in God's place and know that there's nothing that we can do wrong. And it's all God's action on us. It's not really what we do. It's what God does each and every day and each and every time that we gather. So if communion, the bread and the wine, if that's not a normal part of your life, I would encourage you to step inside a church somewhere and experience God's grace. And if it's not something that's open, if it's not something that you can have freely, find another place. Because there's a lot of places where this meal, it's God's action on us. You can't do it wrong. And it's for us. the Last Supper, less than 24 hours remained in Jesus' earthly life, and a lot happened in that last day. Prayer in Gethsemane, betrayal by Judas, arrest, mock trial, beating, an interview with Pilate, crowning with thorns, spitting, mockery, the trudge to Golgotha, last words, and death. As we conclude our service tonight, we strip the altar, removing all the books and the linens, the candles, and the decorations. These decorations, they're symbols of our faith. And often they are donated in honor of loved ones. These holy objects tell God's story as well as the stories of this community. Candles are signs of God's presence. The candle holders on this altar, they feature, they feature ornamental Greek letters, the Alpha and the Omega, which symbolize that God is with us in the beginning until the end. Then the pyramids, the ornamental cloths that cover the altar, are red for Jesus' passion, and they, they feature images of Jesus' journey to the cross. The altar is God's table where all are welcome. 
All are welcome to pray, to feast, to be renewed. The removal of all ornamental decoration is symbolic of the humiliation of Jesus as his life was stripped from him. We pray and sing as we perform this symbolic action. We don't perform this ritual for tradition's sake. Our communities are filled with people who are being reduced in a hundred different ways by illness, death, grief, betrayal, depression, and economic struggle. As we walk through Jesus' humiliation, we face our own. 